One more example. Consider the function given by this f here. Calculate these two second order partials and then use part A to show that this equation is satisfied. All right. So let's do part A. We have the following. So df dx is going to be 2y and df dy is going to be 2x. So I've just calculated the first partial derivatives. So let's go and calculate the second. So again, you can see I'm using the curly D notation here. So if I go up to here and take the partial derivative with respect to x, well, y is constant, so this is just going to be 0. And similarly, if I go up to here and calculate, this is what I want to calculate, calculate d squared f dy, then here x is constant, so this is just going to go to 0. So the value of these two second-order partials are both 0. All right, so let's show that this equation holds. So the left-hand side of 1, it's d squared f dx squared plus d squared f dy squared. And then from A, we know that this is 0 and this is 0. And so we get 0, which of course is the right-hand side of 1. Okay, so we've shown that the left-hand side and the right-hand side are equal. Therefore, what does it mean? This function must satisfy this equation. All right, now this equation here is known as a partial differential equation. Okay, now in, in particular, it's known as Laplace's equation. Okay, so we call it a, a partial differential equation or a PDE because it's an equation and it has partial derivatives inside it. And what part B tells us is that this particular function f is a solution to this, this PDE, this partial differential equation. Now, <clears throat> the particular partial differential, uh, partial differential equation that I showed you is known as Laplace's equation. And it's very important in the modelling of of um, heat conduction, fluid flow, and electromagnetics. And usually what we do when we see a, function, uh, a partial differential equation is that we want to solve it somehow. Okay? So <clears throat> that's a little bit of, a, of an introduction into the partial, uh, partial derivatives, and um, I'll talk a little bit more about what we can do with partial derivatives in the next video.